Hello everyone, and let's check out another beautiful chess game by Adolf Anderson. And in this chess game, Anderson has the white pieces, and his opponent is Felix Kisaritsky. And this game was played in London in 1851, in the same year when Adolf Anderson won the very important, prestigious London Chess Tournament and became the unofficial World Chess Champion. So let's quickly check out this game as soon as possible. Adolf Anderson starts the game with playing e4, e5, and we have the king's gambit, accepted, and bishop to c4 by Anderson. Maybe knight to f3 was the most played move, but this allowed queen to h4 by Kiseritsky. Let's check. And losing the castling rights, Felix Kiseritsky played b5. Bishop takes on b5, knight to f6, knight to f3, attacking the queen, queen to h6, d3, knight to h5, maybe threatening to play knight to g3, and forking the king and the rook, and if pawn takes knight, then queen takes rook, Anderson played knight to h4, blocking, but queen to g5, attacking the knight, and at the same time, attacking the bishop. And Anderson played knight to f5. c6, attacking the bishop. g4, attacking the knight. Knight to f6. And it looks like Kiseritsky is still attacking the bishop. Maybe white needs to defend the bishop. But Anderson played rook to g1, sacrificing the bishop. And Kiseritsky captured the bishop. C takes on b5, and h4, attacking the queen, queen to g6. There are not many safe squares for the queen. And h5 by Anderson, still attacking the queen. Queen to g5 by Kiseritsky, and queen to f3, threatening to chop the pawn with the bishop. And there are not many safe squares for the queen. We have knight to g8, allowing queen to escape. Well, after queen to f3, let's make a random move. Let's say knight to c6, then bishop takes on f4. And how to defend the queen? Knight takes on g4. If bishop takes queen, then knight to h2, forking the king and the queen. So rook takes knight, and white is better. So this is why, after queen to f3, we have knight to g8 by Kiseritsky. And bishop takes on f4. Attacking the queen, queen to f6, knight to c3, bishop to c5. Attacking the rook by Kiseritsky, Anderson played knight to d5. He is attacking the queen, but then queen takes on b2. It looks like Adolf Anderson is in the ropes. Well, as you can see, there is double threat. Attacking the rook on a1, and at the same time, Attacking the rook on g1, how to defend both of them? You can't defend both of them. Anderson played bishop to d6, offering to exchange the bishops. But then bishop takes on g1, capturing the rook. e5, this is blocking the diagonal for the queen. But now, queen takes on a1, leaving the rook, that's check. King to e2. And there is no more checks for black. Black is out of checks. And black played knight to a6, developing the knight. But it is white to move. What would you do in this position? Well, Anderson captured on g7 with the knight. Knight takes on g7, that's check. King to d8. After blocking the diagonal. So that's why Anderson played e5. So after knight takes on g7, check. Black can't capture the knight with the queen. After king to d8, Adolf Anderson played a killer move. And after that move, Kiseritsky is in trouble because he is getting checkmated in next move. What would you do in this position? Can you guess the next move of Anderson? If you are ready, let me show you the move. Well, Adolf Henderson played queen to f6, sacrificing the queen, and Kiseritsky captured the queen, 
Knight takes on f6, but then bishop to e7 by Anderson. Where is the king going? Nowhere. This is checkmate. And what a beautiful chess game by Adolf Anderson. This was one of the immortal chess games of Adolf Anderson, one of the must-see chess games in the whole history of chess. A very beautiful chess game. And thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, and bye-bye.